Okay, so the next video in this series is about something called prime factorization. We're going to go straight in with what this means. If you get asked to express a number as a product of its prime factors, it means to write a number only using prime numbers and the multiplication symbol. And it has loads of different uses, but for now you're just going to need to trust me, this is something that we're going to want to do. And sometimes they will ask you to express a number as a product of its prime factors. So I've started listing the prime numbers here, and you should know what the prime numbers are. But if we list a few more of these, after 3 comes 5, 7, 9 is not a prime number because it's 3 times 3. We then have 11, 13, not 15 because it's 3 times 5. We have 17, 19... 23, 29, and they do keep going and going and going. Prime numbers only have two factors, themselves and number one. Those are the only two factors that they have. So we're going to try and write these numbers here just using this list of numbers, and we are allowed to use the multiplication symbol. So 15 from this list, I'm hoping that you can spot the only way you can write 15 is 3 times 5. Now you may have written it as 5 times 3, but actually I'm going to write with the smallest numbers first of all. Now 12 from this list, I wonder how we could make 12. So I guess I could say that it's like a 6 times 2, and I know that 2 times 3 gives me 6, and then I want to multiply that by 2. So I could say that it's 2 times 3 times 3. Yeah, that's 6 times 3. That's 12. But again, I probably wouldn't write it in that order. I'd probably write 2 times 2 times 3. Now, there's another way that you could write this. Because you have 2 times 2, 2 times 2 can be written as 2 squared or 2 to the power of 2 multiplied by 3. So this is in that kind of index form, and that's in that long written out form. 26 from this list. I think 26 is just going to be 2 times 13. 25 from this list, remember you can use numbers more than once, I think is going to be 5 times 5, which I could write as 5 squared. 55 from this list is 5 times 11. And then 17 is actually just in the list. So I don't have to write anything, I can just say that it is 17. I don't want to say 17 multiplied by 1, because you'll notice 1 is not in the list. So I won't be writing 17 times 1. I'm just going to write 17. Now, they're not going to ask you to find prime factorizations of numbers that are that small. They usually go with numbers that are a bit bigger than these. So we're going to try and think about a common approach about how you might be able to find prime factorizations of much larger numbers like this one that we've got here. And a common approach is to draw a factor tree. So we break a number down into two factors and we stop if it is a prime number. So let's have a look at the number 1,500. And I want you to think of two numbers that it can break down into. My first one that I think of is 150 multiplied by 10. But some of you have, may have thought of it in a different way. Maybe you thought of 2 times by 750. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do both of these trees, and at the end we'll see that we should get the same answer. So it said, break a number down into two factors, okay, good, they multiply to give this, and stop if it is prime. Well, that's not a prime number, and nor is that. So that means I need to keep breaking them down. I'm going to break this 10 down into what it multiplies as, its factors, 2 and 5. But it says to stop if it is prime. Well, that's a prime number because it was in the list, wasn't it? There's 2 and there is 5 as well, and that's also a prime number. So not only am I going to stop if it's prime, but I'm going to put a circle around it to show me that I'm finished. Now, the 150, I'm also going to split into two numbers. I probably see that as a 10 multiplied by a 15. Neither of those are prime. The 10 is the 2 times the 5, and both of those are prime numbers, so I'm going to put a circle around them. And the 15, the only way you can break 15 down is 5 and 3. 5 and 3 are both prime numbers. So this means that 1,500 can be written like this. So I have got 1, 2, 2s, so that's 2 times 2. And then it also looks like I've got just 1, 3 there, so I'm going to multiply it by 3. And then I've got the remaining numbers are a 5, a 5, and a 5. So I've got 5, a 5, and a 5. And if I want to write that in index form, that is 2 squared times 3, times 5 cubed. And you'll notice I've done 2, then 3, then 5. The numbers get bigger. 
Okay, well, maybe you wanted to start it in this way. Let's see if we get the same answer. So I'm gonna do the two and the 750. Well, two is a prime number, so I'm gonna write it like this. And 750, I'm gonna go with 75 and 10, but whatever you do, it will always work if you keep breaking them down. 10, we said, was two and five, and they're both prime numbers, so I'll circle them. 75, maybe this one's a bit harder to spot. You can either think it's in the five times table, the three times table. When I look at 75, I think of it as three multiplied by 25. That's a prime number. And 25 is five multiplied by five. So let's check that they're gonna give us the same thing. I have a two and a two. I have a three. I have a five, a five, and a five, a five, a five, and a five. So we actually end up with the same answer no matter which way you decide about drawing your trees. You're always going to end up with the same kind of answer. So let's have a go at this one. Express 672 as a product of its prime factors, and then you're going to have a go at doing these. So I'm going to look at a calculator tip in just a second, but let's start with 672. I think you could use some of your divisibility checks. The fact that it ends in a two, I know that it can be divided by two. So if I wanna do 672 divided by two, it goes in three, three, remainder one, six, 336. Well, that's also gonna be divisible by two. So I'm gonna say, how many times does two go into 336? One remainder one, six remainder one, eight. 168, and obviously if you had a calculator, you could do that division. So this is also going to be divisible by two, and 168 divided by two, two goes into 16 eight times, and it goes into eight four times, so we've got 84. Oh my gosh, we're going to have another two, so it's going to be 42, another two, half it to 21, and then 21 is three times seven. Now we probably should have been saying each time, all of these twos, and then that three and seven should be um, circled. So 672, it looks like there are one, two, three, four, five twos. So that's two to the power of five, or you could write it out five times, multiplied by three. And then at the end, we have it multiplied by seven. Now, we should actually check that this even works. So I'm gonna just quickly go back to this previous one. We've got 1,500. Let's actually see if we do two squared times three times five to the power of three. That one did give us 1,500. Let's have a look at 272. We said that, sorry, 672. Two to the power of five times three times seven. It is 672. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this calculator tip that I've got for you. It says, um, calculator tip. So let's have a look at what we're going to do for this calculator tip. I'm just going to pull this down to the bottom. What you're going to do for calculator tip is you're going to try and locate the button, which you can see on my calculator here. This button that is above, if you look above the eight, you have ENG, and then above that you've got this button that I'm pressing here. If you press shift and then get up fact, what you're going to be able to do is break the number down. So let me just clear everything on my calculator. Let's do 672. So the way that you do this is the first thing is you type in your number and then you press the equals button so that it's stored in the calculator. All you need to do to get that fact is you press shift to get the yellow things and then we're gonna press that button and automatically it will break it down for you. So I'm gonna show you that again with a different number. I'll do 1,500, the first one that we did. You press equals, shift, and then fact, and it breaks it down to give you that correct answer that we had for 1,500. Let's just put the calculator across to the other side. Yep, two squared times three times five cubed. So this little calculator tip that we've got here, what you're gonna do is, let me just quickly get the right pen that I need. You press shift and then you press the fact button, but make sure that the calculator has already had your number put in and you've pressed equals. So it goes equals, then you go shift and then you go fact. Okay, so you have got some questions that I want you to have a go at here. You can check these yourself using a calculator, but you can do a few of them with a prime factor tree. I'm gonna do just a few of them, and then you can have a go by just checking it on the calculator. So for A, 40, I think I would split it into a four and a 10. That's a two and a two, 
and a 2 and a 5, prime, 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 prime. So 40 is 2 cubed multiplied by 5. For part B of the question, we have 98. That is 2 multiplied by 49. And 49 is 7 times 7. So 98 is equal to 2 multiplied by 7 squared. I'm going to do C, D, E using the calculator. So when I do this, C is 180. I'm going to press equals, shift, fact. It is 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. D is 450. I'm going to press shift, fact, and it is 2 multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by 5 squared. I'm going to do 1540, and I'm going to do shift, fact. It is 2 squared times 5 times 7 times 11, and F, which is the challenge. If you have done this one without a calculator, you will see why this one is a challenge, because it's really hard to spot when you start off the tree with 259, what it breaks down into. Now, if you've watched my earlier video about the divisibility check, you might have tried to see if it was divisible by seven. And it is, because when you do 25, take away that last digit doubled. If I'm confusing you here, you haven't watched my earlier video. If you do 25, take away 18, you do get seven. So it is definitely divisible by seven. So I'm going to show you what happens when we divide it by seven. I'm going to put 259 equals shift fact, and it is seven times by 37. So 37 is also a prime number. So you probably should have done all of these with a tree. I've just put them on the calculator here to speed up the checking of your answers. One thing I didn't mention is the prime factorization of an integer is unique. There is no other way that you would see 672. There is no other way you would see 1,500. And there's no other way you'd see any of these ones here that we've done. It is completely unique. Okay, in the next video, we're gonna be looking at the highest common factor. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.